So let me introduce myself. My name is Yuhai Duan. I'm working as an Apache customer evangelist. So my job is to give talks, meet up and conferences about Apache Cassandra. I also work on open source projects like Achilles, which is an object mapper for Cassandra, and Apache Zeppelin that we are going to use for the demo later. If you have any questions about Apache Cassandra, you can drop me an email or ping me on Twitter. I am working for Datastax. So, Apache Cassandra is an open source project. It belongs to the Apache Foundation. Right? Datastax, we are a commercial company, and we are the biggest contributor to Cassandra. Like 80% of the committers of Apache Cassandra, they are employees of Datastax. And our business model is we take the open source version and we add extra features so we get the enterprise edition of Cassandra. So today we are going to talk about SASE. What is SASE? First, who created it? It is an open source contribution from an engineer team. It is not coming directly from Datastax. So those five people, they have created the full text search index. If you look at their profile on GitHub, you know their company, right? Very famous company. And they are using um, Cassandra internally. And in fact, they have uh, a requirement to do full text search on Cassandra. That's why they developed this index. How? It is a new implementation of the secondary index interface from Apache Cassandra. The idea is instead of um, using Cassandra as a data store for the index structure, they design their own data structure for the index from scratch. Okay? We have full text search option, and especially they don't use Apache Lucene. Because most of people, when they need full text search, they are just using Apache Lucene. But we don't. The reason is that um, when you are using a third party library, you cannot control the low level. Because Lucene is creating segment file on disk, and sometimes it compacts those segment files, and you do not control this because you are going through Lucene. And we want to have a, a total control on the low level. SASE, it's the name, it stands for SS Table Attach Secondary Index. It means that the life cycle of the index file follow the same as the life cycle of the data file. Okay. So let's start with some demo. So here I have, so let me create a new. I have um, a table called album, which contains musical albums, of course. So let's see some samples of this table. OK, so you have the ID of the album, the artist name, the country, of, the country in which the album has been released, the quality, and the title, and the year of release, of course. So now I want to be able to search my, so uh, for your information, there are like um, 110,000 albums in my uh, demo, my data set. Okay, 110,000 approximately. So I want to be able to search on my album title. So I create an index. Mod contains, it means that I want to be able to search by substring. Okay, give me all the substring contained in my title. I want to use tokenizing. So I use the standard analyzer with stemming. I will skip stop word. I define the local, which is English here, normal, normalized lowercase. So this is for the searching for the title. I want also to be able to search by artist name. 
So I create an index on the artist. This time, I don't want to tokenize. I don't want to split the artist name into token because it doesn't make sense. It's just the name, OK? Mode contains. Uh, I want to also to search by country. No token. Mod prefix. Well, it means what it means. It means that I can search by prefix only, but I don't care because I am not interested by searching country by substring, so I don't care. And I also create an index on the year of release. Okay. So now let's see it in action. Oh, it's the same query. Give me um, all title which contain love in uh, the lands, okay, between 40 and 1940 and 2010. So just click love, okay, love, fine. Nothing else to say. Now let's try the substring search. I want all the titles which contain the substring love, which is different, okay? Now, mm, mm, love, lover, lovers, you see? So in this case, it also match lovers because I searched by substring, of course. Uh, now let's illustrate how tokenization work. So I have an example, but I need to change back to USA. Dance. So I search by dance because of the tokenization. The index will return me all the title containing dance, but all the derivation of dance, so dancing. Dancing is also a good match because it comes from the, f the same world, dance. Dances, of course, and so on. And you can also put multiple keywords like dance and chair. The chairman dances, okay? So this is full text search. So even if I, I change my dances, even if I change my query, it still returns the same result. Because this query will, before performing the query, the index will also uh, perform stemming on my input. Okay. So it's pretty powerful. So how is it possible? How is it done? Demo. First, you need to know that uh, in Cassandra, secondary index are distributed, okay? So it means that on each machine, so here I have a cluster of eight machines. Imagine that I have um, a table users, okay? And I create a, an index on user country. The index is dist distributed. It means that on each node, I have the index value, which is pointing to all the user on my local machine. So for example, I have some French user on this machine, but also on this machine and on this machine, okay? So how do we query data with an in this distributed index? So for people who knows about Apache, Solar, or Elasticsearch, when you query your data, the master will send a query to all the machines and then fetch the value back. With Cassandra, we cannot do that. Why? Because sometimes you have a cluster of 1,000 machines, and you don't want to query 1,000 machines, OK? For example, Netflix, they have a cluster of 1,000 machines, and we don't want to do that. So we have an, a different algorithm. First, so the, the query will hit a coordinator. A coordinator is just a random node, which is responsible for the query. First, the coordinator will issue a first round of query. So it will contact some machine. Give me the answer. If it doesn't have enough result, it will issue a second round of query to asking different nodes, give me more answer. 
don't have enough, give you more answers. And at each round, the number of machines will increase, of course. So it has some implication. It means that if you query with a non-restrictive filters, well, you will hit all, my, all the nodes in the cluster. Okay, okay, there is no magic. Give me all, I don't know, all, uh, all albums in the US. Well, you have a lot. The solution for this is to always use limit, right? Limit one time. Because in fact, if you give enough criteria, uh, well, nobody is, is going to process 10,000 results, okay? 1,000 is already a lot. Second key, Kevin, imagine you have a one-to-one -one index, for example, user email. You create an index on a new user email. For each email value, how many users do I have? Maximum one, because the email address is something unique, right? So in this case, imagine you are querying this, give me all users where email likes something like this. First round, I don't find. Okay, not found. Second round, not found. Last round, at best, you have one user. If you are lucky. If you are not lucky, you have query all the nodes in the cluster, but you have zero result. Right. It is how it works, one-to-one -one index. So the solution for this scenario is to use the new materialized view which has been introduced in Cassandra 3. Okay, you create a view. So in fact, it is like a denormalization. Okay, you create a denormalization table for your user, so call user by email, and then the primary key is the user email. So that if you query this view providing the user email, because it is a primary key, it is a partition key, Cassandra will query only one machine, even if you have a cluster of 1,000 machines. Okay, so this is the right solution for one-to-one -one index. Another use case is analytics. Imagine that you are running a batch of analytics. You want to perform some aggregation on all your data, and you are using the secondary index to filter down data. So what you are interested in is the, the whole set of data, not just uh, the first 1,000 rows. In this case, I recommend using Spark. So you have a collocated Apache Spark installed on each machine. And when you are using secondary index with Spark, what is interesting is that the index lookup is done locally. Okay. Each Spark will just query locally the data with the index, and then the aggregation is done in memory, in memory by Spark. So it is much, much faster. Any questions so far? Yes. Now, if you have like, eight nodes, are you limited to like, 100 results? It's fine. The first one is random, right? So yeah, first one, it, it, the, the first node to be chosen is uh, following the token range. So yeah, it is random for your user. Basically, you have 1,000 rows, you say give it 100, so it basically becomes random with 100. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is random, yeah. But you can't uh, do an order by in this case. What? You can do order by sorting. No, it is an interesting question. Please keep it for later. I have this uh, slide covering the, the ordering. Other question? Yes. What? If you want to do a search. There is no magic in life. Because ordering means you, have, you want to have a global order, right? You don't care about local order. It means that you, have to, you need to have all data, so all machines. We will see later. So now let's get into the detail of the implementation. The life cycle, so as I said before, so this is the life cycle when you are writing data to Cassandra. So when you are doing an insert into Cassandra, first we write data on a commit lock so, so that your data is durable. Okay? And then we put the data in memory. 
And only after that, we acknowledge the client to say, OK, it is written. Because if we don't write to the commit log, and then you, you power down the machine, you will lose all your data, because it's only in memory, right? And so when the data is written in memory, we also create an index structure to index directly the data which are in memory. So it's called index mem table, memory table. Okay. And after some time, the, the, the amount of data in memory will grow, 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 grow. So we need to flush to disk. Oh, just before, f just for info, we are using those data structure in memory. So the Guava library is used for the suffix and prefix query, OK? So prefix, concurrent registry, usage is like John percentage. Suffix tree is used for the contains mode. And if you have uh, a data type which is not text, which is integer, long, double, UUID, we all use concurrent skip split set from the JDK, a modified version. Okay. Now, when data from memory are flushed to disk, so we write data in immutable data structure we call SS table, string sorted table. And at the same time, we write the on this index structure. And each SS table has its own attached on disk index structure. The, the reason we do this attach, attaching is, oh, it's also work for compaction. So every time that all the, the data files are merged together, the index structure are also merged together. The reason to do that is because since the data files are immutable, in the index structure, we can keep pointers, direct pointers, to the exact offset of the row in the data file. So it is very, very efficient. Because when you have the exact offset on disk, you will skip a lot of data. Right? So for example, if I have an, an index on country, so French user, this is a pointer to the offset of this row. This is the pointer to the offset of this row, and so on, etc. And those data structure, if you are interested, they are built using a modified version of suffix tree. Okay. So just go on Wikipedia and look for suffix tree. You will see how it works. Any question? Okay. Query planner. This is a very interesting piece of engineering. They not only uh, they implemented their own data structure, but they also created a query planner. So if you are familiar with uh, relational database, for example, Oracle, you know that in Oracle, you have a query optimizer. So it is the same here. The goal is to build a predicate tree and to perform predicate pushdown and optimization and reordering. So let's take a very simple example. Here is my query. Where age less than 100, first name start with P, and first name does not contain PA, and age bigger than 21. So this is the predicate tree, the initial tree, OK? Built from this query. Fine. Now let's see how we can optimize it. Because n is an associative and commutative operation, we can merge all those three predicates together. Okay. Now, we, have, we want to fetch all first names starting with p, but not pa. So the not equal predicate is transformed into exclusion. What does it mean? It means that we will, we will do a scan to find all the first names starting with P, but every time we see a PA, we exclude. So it works as an exclusion filter. It is much more efficient to do that this way. And last but not least, again, when you have a tree with N close, we can merge them together. Okay, so this is the final optimize predicate tree. So I show you a quite simple example, but you can imagine more complex examples. 
Any question? Clear? Okay. Some benchmark. Aha. How does it work? How does it perform? So before presenting this new index, I benchmark it myself. Okay. So I have a 13 bare machine, bare, bare metal machines, six CPU, 64 gigabyte of RAM, and a lot of SSD, so very fast. No problem with I.O. In my data set, I have inserted 13 billions of rows. Oh, yeah. With Cassandra, if you want to do a benchmark, do not do a benchmark with 1,000 or 1 million rows. It is meaningless. <coughs> you need to have more data, because the more you have data and the more you can see uh, the effects of uh, scaling out, Okay, so 30 billions of rows. I created one numerical index with 36 distinct values, two text index with set seven distinct values, and one text index with three distinct values. What does it mean? This kind of index are very dense. It means that for only three distinct values, you have a lot of matching rows. And it is very interesting to, to, to benchmark this uh, new index. So here is the result. On the x axis, you have the number of predicates, so the number of where closed, OK? And on the y axis, you have the latency in milliseconds. And this is limit 100. So I stop at first 100 rows. So if I have only one predicate, 26 milliseconds, fine. The more I add predicates, so the more I filter, the more it takes time. Uh -huh. I increase the limit 1,000. So of course, here it takes 26 milliseconds with one predicate. Now it takes more, okay? which is quite logical. But still, we, we can see that the, the response time increase with the number of predicates. Okay, the, sa the same time, the same result for ten thousands. But after a threshold like one hundred thousand limits, you have this kind of uh, result. So let's just go back to this figure. It's not very intuitive. The more I add predicates, the more I filter. So the more, the more restrictive it is, you should say it should be faster because I restrict more. No, because if you are using four predicates, it means that for the index, it has to look into four different files, one file for each predicate. Okay? And then it looks into four different files to get the pointers, and then go back to the original data file to fetch the original data. So you are paying the price here. Because the limit is very small, you are paying the price for reading at four different files. Okay? But the more, and in fact, you, you spend most of the time reading the index than reading the or original data itself. But the more you increase the limit, and now you can see the benefit. In fact, the time you spend reading the index file now is smaller than the time you spend reading the, the file itself. Okay. Of course, I did another benchmark. Now I did a full scan using server-side paging. So I, I'm using an iterator okay, to, f to fetch out all the data. If I have on one, only one predicate, and I want to fetch out all the data, so 36 million of rows, it takes me like a 10 minutes, OK? And the more you add predicates, the less you have rows, matching rows. And of course, the faster it is in this case, right? So you know the, the, the effect of if you have a very small limit, you spend more time reading the index itself, of course. So the takeaway, is it available? Yes. 
Cassandra 3.5. In fact, it is already available in Cassandra 3.4, but it has critical bugs. I have tested it, and I have found critical bugs, so they fix it. So use 3.5. For the future enhancement, uh, they will also allow indexing on collection. So you can index list, set, and map. They will introduce the or clause. So where, blah, 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 or blah, 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 and so on. So very interesting. They will introduce the not equal operator, which is not available right now. The question, I will say, how does it compare this, this new index to a real search engine? Well, Cassandra is not a search engine. Cassandra is a database. And with this new index, we have search capabilities, right? But it is not a search engine. It will be always slower using this index than using Elasticsearch or Solar. Why? Because you have two read paths. First, you need to read the index file, and then you go back to original data. With Elasticsearch or Solar, you are just reading the index itself. So it will always be faster with a real search engine. There is no scoring because we don't use Lucene. There is no ordering. Sorry, you are disappointed. I know. I am too. But there is no ordering unless you fetch all the data. But uh, pff, say 36 million, no one, nobody wants to fetch 36 million rows unless you are doing analytics, of course. So there is no ordering and there is no grouping. If you don't need those three features, and you need full text search and advanced search, multi criteria search, yes, SASE is a good fit for you. If you need ordering, grouping, uh, thank you. <laughs> Any other question? I'm ready. I think we are. Ahead of time, right? Do you have it with production and big data or it's just an Oh, the question is, is it in production? So to be honest, it is in production at Apple. For more than one year. I'm not allowed to say that loudly, so because they are very secret about their technology. So it is uh, in production for more than one year at but but they develop this index structure for Cassandra 2.0. And they, they port the source code to Cassandra 3.0, which is another major version. And we have completely rewritten the storage engine. So yes, there are, there are bugs because of that. So now, well, personally, I tested it myself with, as I said, 30 billions of rows. So I have found many, many bugs. But I cannot guarantee you that now it is zero bug. You know, it's open source, so maybe there are some hidden uh, corner cases that I didn't see. But at least now it's quite stable after my, uh, my run on uh, my benchmark. It's quite stable. So yes, just try it. As always with open source, you don't have strong warranties. And if you want to have a strong warranties about quality, we, uh, in the uh, enterprise edition, we have an integration of Cassandra with Solar, so with Lucene. And yes, this is uh, very, very stable because it has been released for th more than three years now and used in production by many customers. So yeah, it's up to you. To if you want something uh, more robust, more major, but it's not free, or uh, if you want open source, but maybe there are bugs. It's up to you. Another question? Yes. Using a generic uh, sort of infrastructure 
Now it's uh, it's built from scratch. They develop their own data. Oh, we have some time, so I can show you something interesting if you are interested. Uh, be careful, it is very scary. We are going really deep into detail. But we have some time, so. So this is my full slide. Aha, aha. So this is the... Um, Uh, so this is the, the the real data structure. Okay, you have like a header, data block, pointers. Pointers is like um, um, at the, it's like a B tree to to do like a binary search to quick, quickly access the data. Uh, blah 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 blah. So you have offset arrays. So then you have pointers to. Uh, the country way. Let me show you the pointers block. Yeah, this is a, a B tree like structure. So, for example, give me all first names start with uh, John. Okay. So here you have uh, the. Imagine you have Helen here. So you go. You are going to left or right, and then you are comparing the text. And if it is uh, lower than or less than John, you go on this side, all the way you go on this side, until you reach the data block. So it's a, it's a hard-coded? Yeah, hard-coded, yes, from scratch. Yeah, there's no way for the like user defined index or something? User what? Kind of user-defined index or something? User-defined index, not, no. Yeah, but, you know, uh, it, because we implement it like this, we can have uh, really low level optimization. If you let the user define, you don't know what user will do. The thing is, but in the future, uh, we are thinking about allowing people to, to, um, to create an index, what we call functional index. It, it means that you have a user defined function, and you, I want to index on, I don't know, my function apply to a column. So this is in the roadmap, yes. Yeah, it will be more powerful, of course. Any other question? Yes. Uh, you say uh, no, because uh, no, because as um, remember my last slide, mm -hmm. you if SASE, you don't have ordering, you don't have scoring. No, not yet, but maybe they're building up. It's not planned. And because Solar is using Lucene, and you have much more power with Lucene. And in fact, in the Enterprise Edition, the idea is, OK, you have a database. We want to give you a, a really powerful search engine. Embed it. It means that in, it's put in the same JVM. It's not like you need to, to start another cluster of Solar. It's in the same JVM. So you want, we want to give people such capabilities which goes beyond, you know, sim simple search. Because with solar, you can do like a faceting, you can do a lot of things. That's it. Thank you.